There's nothing that I can do about it. I didn't make myself have this and I can't take it away. Hey, it's Rana. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm finally going to tell my story about everything that happened to me leading up to my IIH or idiopathic intracranial hypertension diagnosis. I figured this was the perfect opportunity for me to sit down and have this like film this video have this talk with y'all because i actually just changed my medications um for like the fourth time i wanted to start documenting the medication change and how everything was going with that and that was a perfect time for me to sit down and talk to y'all what the heck happened that led to the diagnosis because i wasn't vlogging during this time period um and i also knew that it can be a little bit difficult for me to get my thoughts out um, because that's part of the medication and also part of the brain condition where here I have the perfect like little meme that I saw I'll just insert it here but that's like the exact like that's the best way that I can describe it what I want to say and what I say um, is two different things sometimes and it can take me a little bit of time to really just like blah like get out what I'm trying to say so um, we'll start I'll just like do my little timeline um, October 31st um, of 2022 I was at a Halloween party I was wearing makeup went to bed I woke up the next morning like I didn't take my makeup off. Um, I woke up the next morning and my eye was a little bit irritated. A couple days go by, my eyes are still bothering me, uh, or my one eye is still bothering me. So I start doing some over-the-counter remedies. I'm thinking maybe a sty or something like that, and I'm not getting any relief. So I book a urgent care appointment and this is back whenever we're still wearing masks. So I go into the appointment, I have my mask on, like the nurse uh, walks in and she's like, oh, you have pink eye. I had a sore underneath, like on my eyelid. And so she was like, can you pull your mask down a little bit? So I pull my mask down under my nose and she was like, oh, you have shingles. She gives me some medicine for the shingles and then she does refer me to a ophthalmologist because it's so close to my eye at this point um, that she's concerned that I might have shingles in my eye. Um, so I go through the whole thing with the shingles. I make the appointment with the neurologist, I mean the, opto the ophthalmologist. Um, they don't see anything wrong with my eyes. Everything's good to go. Cool. In the end of November or the beginning of the December of that year, I have my first ever migraine. Um, it's in quotation marks because at this point I don't know any better, but they're technically not migraines. All I know is that I'm having extreme sensitivity to the light. I was actually babysitting my niece and nephew, which really sucked. Then January of 2023, I was at brunch with Jonathan and I noticed that I was getting these like squiggled lines. I feel like I couldn't really see very well. I was having kind of like tunnel vision. And so I started having those, like that was my second one because actually technically that's what happened to me at, when I was babysitting but I wasn't paying close enough attention to the like the first beginning onset symptoms. I had never had migraines, so I'm thinking it's related to the shingles. So I go back to this ophthalmo ophthalmologist, um, but she tells me it is related to the shingles, or it could likely be related to the shingles, and that um, it'll get better as I get further away from my, my shingles outbreak. They continue to happen, so I go back to the ophthalmologist again, and, I'm, and this time I actually see the ophthalmologist. This entire time, I didn't realize that I wasn't seeing the ophthalmologist, I was seeing like a nurse practitioner or something like that. And I speak to the actual ophthalmologist, and she's like, yeah, these migraines, um, they have nothing to do with your shingles, and you need to go get an MRI. Uh, so, I don't have insurance at this point. 
but because it's such a thing that just came on suddenly, Jonathan and I pay for me to have an MRI done out of pocket. So I have the MRI done and the doctor gets, the ophthalmologist gets the results back and she gives me a call and she lets me know that I have ESS, which is empty cell syndrome. And she tells me that it's not anything to worry about, um, but she refers me to a neurologist. In the meantime that I'm waiting for this neurology appointment, I get a little bit of, you know, do a little bit of research about ESS and I also post about it on my TikTok and I get a comment from someone who says that IIH, ESS and IIH go hand in hand. If I have ESS, I have IIH. So I go to the neurology appointment with my MRI results and she's like, before she even sees me really, she basically says, it's probably IIH <laughs> because if you have ESS, you have IIH. So ESS, empty cell syndrome, is when your pituitary gland, the space where your pituitary gland is um, actually flattened or partially flattened because of all the spinal fluid and brain fluid and everything is like pressing up against your um, pituitary gland. So I have, there's partial empty cell and there's empty cell and I have empty cella. So I've actually seen images of my head and you can see where, like my brain, and you can see where the space is, where the pituitary gland should be and the space is filled with the fluid. So at this point with my neurologist, um, now it's time to get the official diagnosis for IIH. So she orders me the full workup. I have an MRI, an MIR with, con with contrast. I have to have a lumbar puncture and we start the medications. The most common medications that someone diagnosed with IH is put on is Diamox, which is a diuretic, to help flush out the fluid buildup, um, to decrease the pressure, and um, Topamax, which is for the migraines, to prevent, um, to prevent the migraines. And I'm just going to say right now, I hate them both with everything in me <laughs> um so from that point i also learned a lot about iih and exactly what it is so like i said at the beginning it's idiopathic intracranial hypertension and that means my brain or my body thinks i have a brain tumor but i do not and all those migraines and everything are not actually migraines they're pressure headaches and the part that is the most concerning is that it can put pressure on your optic nerve that can cause uh, blindness if not treated. Now, that is what I was, that's what I was experiencing whenever I said I was seeing like the little things over here and then I would get kind of like the tunnel vision because they weren't ocular migraines, they were pressure headaches, it was pushing on my optic nerve and I was losing my vision. Um, so that's why it's super important that I have a regimen when it comes to my medications. The problem is, is that the medications are, it's like they only work for so long, so they're constantly having to up your dosage and they can be really harsh on your body. The side effects are really, really bad. Um, and then there's lumbar punctures which reduce the fluid buildup but your body immediately reproduces the fluid. So they've really gone away from doing therapeutic lumbar punctures. I'm actually fixing to have one, <laughs> but um, only because I haven't had one in so long. Um, so I'm eligible to have one again, but typically when they used to do therapeutic LPs, um, it was on a more con like consistent basis. Um, the last time that I asked to do one, she told me that I couldn't do them because they're not really, they're trying to get away from doing that. Like if I'm having symptoms, I need to increase or change my meds. Um, well, not really change because she really likes, and all of the medical people like the Diamox and the Topamax. Um, unfortunately, I've learned that the Diamox ER, extended release, I cannot take. I will have an allergic reaction to it. Technically, I'm allergic to Diamox. And then I just recently got off Topamax because the Topamax was just not good for me. Um, it made me so slow. My brain fog was so bad. It made me feel like just 
not like the best way I could describe it was it made me feel like a watered down monotone version of myself I felt like I had lost my personality I lost who I was Jonathan said that I was having a lot of problems with irritability and that I was quick to snap these are things that can you know is known Topo Max is known for so um, I wanted to get off the top of Max and I wanted to get back on Diet Mox because my symptoms were returning, unfortunately. So I'm now back on Diet Mox. I take 500 milligrams a day, which is actually a very, very low dose for someone with um, IH. I will say I'm very lucky because um, when I went, part of the um, the process is also you have to have a lot of follow, you have to have a lot of visits and follow ups with an ophthalmologist and i show no signs of any optic nerve damage i don't have any papilledema which is um swelling or pressure on the optic nerve everything is looking good for me i'm managing my my illness very well um and then as far as the topamax i'm off the topamax and i'm now on propanol which i feel like i've been on it now for a week i think and I feel like after day three or four, I felt like my old self again, which oh, is such a blessing. Like, you have no idea. And I know that Jonathan is super happy about that because um, he was feeling kind of the brunt of that. But I feel like that was like a really condensed version of like a three year long medical problem that I was experiencing. There's a lot more to it. <laughs> um, I have to be very careful with the heat with my um, my heart rate um, it's causing me problems on top of everything else with like because of that I can't really like exercise the way that I used to I can't lift weights I can't do cardio like um, I know y'all have seen that I you can look at me and tell that I've gained weight and I mean I can't do what I did in the past which is a little bit depressing but I try not to beat myself up about it I feel good when I'm consistent at the gym and I can't do what I did and I can't even go for a walk outside without having to really think about what I'm doing I've learned during this process like it's I have to give myself grace because I am not the person I was prior to my diagnosis. I have a chronic illness now. I can't do what I did before and that's okay. Getting up and going to the gym every day like four or five times a week was part of my routine and if I wasn't doing it I missed it and I cannot do it anymore. I have tried. Um, some people with IH can work out, so, like, if, everyone's different, like, but I have tried to go back to the gym, I've tried to work, I've just tried to walk, like, I have, I have tried, and unfortunately, every time I try to do physical activities, um, it increases my pressure, and I start having really bad symptoms, so, um it's something that i'm just trying to figure out i i'm hopeful that one day something will change and i'll be able to go back to that lifestyle um but for right now my focus is not on that it's hard for me to vlog because i don't like seeing myself on the camera i don't like you know um i miss i miss the old me before my diagnosis there's nothing that i can do about it I didn't make myself have this and I can't take it away but when I see the pictures and the vlogs of myself from a few years ago it's upsetting I don't know if I'll ever get that back my body is like fighting against me at this point so anyways I gotta stop talking about that don't get a chronic illness it's not fun I don't advise it that's a lot of information and I'm gonna have a lot to edit but um, if you have any questions, if there was, I'm sure there's like, I missed some stuff. If you want to know more about idiopathic intracranial hypertension, idiopathic meaning they don't know what causes it, intracranial means in the brain, hypertension means high pressure. Um, leave a comment down below. 
I will be happy to do another video. Now that I've done this video, I feel like I can start documenting my new med change or back on Dymox, starting for Panadol and how great I'm feeling. So um, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.